Hey everyone, Chris here from Project Option, and in this options trading strategies video, we're going to talk about the bull call spread. So let's dive right into it. So what is the bull call spread? Well, a bull call spread is sometimes referred to as a long call spread or a debit call spread. They're all the same thing. So that strategy consists of buying a call and selling a call at a higher strike price than your long call. Now both legs use the same number of contracts and reside in the same expiration cycle. So the maximum profit potential of the bull call spread is the call spread width minus the debit you pay times 100. So if you purchase a $5 wide call spread and pay $2.50 for it, your maximum profit potential is the $5 spread width minus the $2.50 debit times 100 which is $250. Now the maximum loss potential is the net debit paid times 100. So if you pay $2 for a call spread and you know it expires out of the money, your maximum loss will be the $2 debit you paid times 100 and that loss comes to $200. Now the expiration break even price of the bull call spread is the long call strike price plus the debit paid. Now the estimated probability of profit really depends on the relationship between your call spread and the stock price. If you purchase a far out of the money call spread, your probability of profit will be less than 50%. If you purchase a at the money call spread, so you buy you know maybe one strike in the money, sell one strike out of the money, you'll have a probability of profit right around 50%. Now if you buy a deep in the money call spread, your probability of profit will be greater than 50%. Now the resulting position after expiration is no stock position if both the long call and short call expire in the money. However, if only the long call expires in the money, then that position is going to expire to plus 100 shares of stock since that in the money call converts to 100 shares of stock at expiration. Now in regards of assignment risk, um, you can get assigned early on a bull call spread because a bull call spread has a short call position in it. So if the stock price is significantly higher than your entire call spread, there is a chance that you could get assigned on that short call. So now that you know the strategy characteristics of the bull call spread, let's go ahead and look at a hypothetical example and really drill down on each of those characteristics that we just discussed. So here we have a hypothetical option chain and we're going to construct a bull call spread from these options. So at the time of these option prices, let's say the stock price is trading for $150 and we purchase the 145-155 call spread. Now that means we're going to purchase the 145 call for $8.80 and we're going to sell the 155 call for $3.99. So since we paid $8.80 and we collected $3.99, this 145-155 call spread is going to come out to a net debit of $4.81. So let's go ahead and see what that means for the expiration risk graph for this position. Alright, so as we can see, the bull call spread has limited risk and also limited profit potential. So as we said before, the maximum loss potential is the debit we pay times 100. Now in this case, we purchased the spread for a $4.81 debit, so that means the maximum loss potential is 481 times 100, which is $481. Now we see that the maximum loss potential occurs at any stock price equal to or less than $145. That's because if the stock price is below $145, the long call and short call will both expire worthless, and that means we're going to lose more money on that long call than we're going to make on the short call. And in fact, the specific max loss will be the net debit paid times 100. Now, at any price between 145 and the break even price of 149.81, we can actually have a partial loss because if the long call expires in the money, but the stock price is below the break even price, then that long call is going to have some value at expiration, in which case we won't lose the full $4.81 debit. We will have some residual value, but the strategy will still be a loser overall. Now the break-even price is the long call strike price of $145 plus the $4.81 debit. So that brings our break-even price to $149.81. Now in, in regards to profits, we can see that the maximum profit potential is $519. 
Now that comes from the $10 spread width. So 155 short call minus the 145 long call is a spread width of $10. And since we paid $4.81 for this $10 wide spread, $10 minus $4.81 brings us to $5.19 of maximum profit potential. Now, that profit potential is realized at any price greater than $155 at expiration. Now, that's because if the stock price is greater than $155, this spread can only be worth $10 because we own the $145 call and we're short the $155 call. So, the maximum spread value is $10. Since we paid $4.81 for it, the maximum profit is $519. So now that you know the expiration risk graph, you know the basic characteristics of the long call spread strategy, let's go ahead and take a look at some examples to demonstrate how the strategy performs when the stock price changes. Alright, so the first example we're going to look at is a scenario where a bull call spread actually breaks even at expiration. So here's the setup. The initial stock price is 108.82, and we're going to work with the 100 call and the short 115 call, both expiring in 45 days. So the net debit paid will be $11.18 for the 100 call, less the $1.94 credit for the 115 call, which brings our net debit to $9.25. Now the break-even price is the long call strike of 100 plus the 9.24 debit which brings our break-even price to 109.24. So if the stock price is greater than 109.24 at expiration, the strategy will make money. Now our maximum profit potential is the $15 wide call strikes less the $9.24 debit we paid times 100, which brings our max profit potential to 576. Now our maximum loss potential is the debit we pay times 100, so our max loss is $924. So Let's go ahead and take a look at how this strategy performs as the stock price changes. So in the top part of this graph, we're looking at the long call strike price, the short call strike price, the break even price, and we're looking at the stock price in relation to those three things. In the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the price of the 100, 115 long call spread. So as we can see here, the stock price falls a little bit and the the call spreads value also falls and then the stock price rallies to a price greater than the short call strike price so at one point this call spread was entirely in the money and as we can see the spreads price reached a value of thirteen dollars and fifty cents at the highest point so the profit on the spread was actually a little over four dollars at one point now at expiration the stock price was trading right around the break-even price of 109.24 and as such, the long call spread that we purchased was worth right around $9.24. Now that's because the 115 short call actually expires worthless, but the long call with the strike price of 100 is trading right around $9.24. So since the net value of that spread is $9.24 and that's the price we purchased it for, this spread actually broke even. So this is just an example of a break even long call spread. Now keep in mind that the trader who owned the spread could have locked in profits early when the stock price was trading above the short call strike price and to close a bull call spread before expiration all you have to do is sell the long call and buy back the short call in the same transaction. Alright so example number two we're gonna look at a scenario where a trader loses money on an out of the money long call spread position. So here's the setup. The initial stock price is $569.92, and we're going to look at buying the 575 635 call spread expiring in 35 days. So we're going to buy the 575 call, and we're going to short the 635 call for a net debit of $21.45. So we're paying $32.45 for the 575 call, and we're collecting $11 for the 635 call. So that's how we get the net debit of $21.45. Now the break-even price is the long call strike price of $575 plus the $2145 debit paid, which brings our break-even price to $596.45. So that's where we need the stock price to be above at expiration. The maximum profit potential is the $60 wide call strikes minus the $2145 debit paid. 
times 100, which brings our max profit potential to $3,855. Now the maximum loss potential is the debit paid times 100, so our max loss is $2,145. Now, as you may have noticed, we're buying a 575, 635 call spread but the initial stock price is $569.92 when we do so. So we are buying an out-of-the-money call spread in this case. So we can see that there, the probability of profit is less than 50%. Now another way to learn that the call spread has a low probability of profit is to look at the max profit relative to the max loss. So in this case, the max profit potential is significantly higher than the maximum loss potential, which makes this a lower probability trade. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this trade performs through time. Alright, so as, as we can see, in the top graph we're looking at the long call strike price, the break even price, and the short call strike price relative to the stock price. And in the bottom part of the graph we're looking at the price of the spread that we purchased, which is the 575, 635 call spread. So as we can see here, the stock price actually did rise from 575 to 635, and at the same time, the call spread's value rose from $21.45 right up to around $40. So there were significant profits on this long call spread when the stock price increased to $635. However, the stock price actually collapsed from $635 down to $480. So at that point, the entire call spread was significantly out of the money. And as we can see, as the stock price collapsed, so did the value of that call spread. So at around 11 days to expiration, this call spread was essentially worthless because, you know, the, the stock was, was trading for around $480, but we owned the 575, 635 call spread. So this just shows that if the stock price falls significantly and your long call spread becomes significantly out of the money, the call spread's value is going to be next to nothing, in which case you pretty much have already lost all that you can make. So in this particular example, if you would have purchased the 575, 635 call spread, you would have lost $2,145 if you held it to expiration because the long call and the short call both expired worthless. Now as I said before, you can close a call spread early before expiration if you want to lock in profits or losses. So let's say the person who bought the spread wanted to sell it for $30. So since they bought it for $2,145, once the spread's value reached $30, they could just sell the call spread at that price and lock in that profit. So if you bought it for $21.45 and you, it, you sold it for $30, you would lock in a profit of $855. So that's the $30 sale price minus the $21.45 purchase price times 100, which gives you $855. Alright, so we've got one more example to get through, and that's a scenario where a trader realizes the maximum profit potential on a long call spread. So here's the setup. Initial stock price is $57.47, and we're going to look at buying the 4970 call spread expiring in 82 days. So we're going to pay $11.10 for the 49 call, and we're going to collect $1.85 for the 70 call which brings our net debit paid to $9.25. Now the break-even price is the $49 long call strike price plus the $9.25 debit paid, which brings our break-even price to $58.25. Now the maximum profit potential in this case is $1,175. Now that comes from the fact that we have $21 between our short call and long call, and we paid $9.25 for the spread. Now our maximum loss potential is the debit paid of $9.25 times 100, which brings our max loss to $925. So let's go ahead and take a look at this spread's performance through time as the stock price is changing. All right, so again, in the top part of the graph, we're looking at the long call strike price, the short call strike price, the break-even price of the spread, and then the stock price in relation to those three things. And in the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the price of the 4970 long call spread, along with any corresponding profits or losses. So as we can see here, between 82 days to expiration and around 47 days to expiration, the stock price is kind of just remaining right around that break-even price of 5820. However, 
right around 45 days to expiration, the stock price surges from 58.20 to right around $80. So at that point, this spread is actually significantly in the money, and we can see that the spread's value increased as the stock price shot up. So, in fact, the most we could, the most this this 49.70 call spread could be worth is the width of the spreads of $21. So right around 45 days to expiration, we can see that, that that jump in the stock price actually brings the spread's value to its maximum potential value of $21. So you know, at expiration, the stock price was still above the short call strike price of 70, and in this case, the spread's value expired to $21. So the maximum profit potential of $1,175 was realized in this case, but keep in mind, you did not have to hold the spread to expiration. In fact, right after that initial stock price move, it's likely that anyone who owned this call spread sold the call spread early because you know, it was already worth near $21. And if you're already sitting near your maximum profit potential and you still have 45 days to expiration, why would you wait until expiration to pick up those last few pennies when you can just lock it in right now and be done with it? You know, you never know if that stock price is going to collapse just as fast, in which case your full winner turns into a losing trade. So this is just a good example that shows when the stock price increases and is above your short call strike at expiration, a long call spread will realize the maximum profit potential. All right, so let's go ahead and recap the main concepts from this video. So buying call spreads is also referred to as long call spreads or bull call spreads or debit call spreads, all the same thing. So a bull call spread is a bullish strategy with limited profit potential and limited loss potential. So it's kind of a, a conservative strategy if you trade you know, narrow spreads. So the maximum profit potential on a long call spread is the width of the call strikes less the debit paid. And the maximum gain is realized when the stock price is above the short call strike price at expiration or if the stock price jumps significantly above the call spread before expiration, it can still be worth its maximum value. The maximum loss of a long call spread is the debit paid, and that occurs when the stock price falls significantly or is below the long call strike price at expiration. The break-even price of a long call spread is the long call strike price plus the debit paid. Now to close a long call spread before expiration, a trader can sell the spread at its current price to lock in profits or losses. So like any other option strategy, you do not need to hold the strategy until expiration. And lastly, since a long call spread includes a short option, you can actually be assigned early on that short option if it's deep in the money before expiration. So in the case of a long call spread, we are short a call. So if the stock price is significantly higher than the short call strike price before expiration and that short call is trading with very little extrinsic value or there's a dividend coming up in the stock, then there's potential to be assigned early on that short call. Now, a short call assignment means that you'll essentially short 100 shares of stock at the short call strike price for each short call that you have. Well, thank you for watching everybody. I hope you learned about a new bullish strategy that you can implement in your account today. And if you enjoyed this video and found it informative, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive all of our upcoming YouTube videos as they are released.